the sound up. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another ATK live q and I am Dan Souza, your humble editor-in-chief of Cooks Illustrated. I'm here with Keith Dresser, who is executive food editor of Cooks Illustrated. Hey, everybody. Combined, we've got a lot of knowledge about food, and we hope you have a lot of questions. Um, we're really excited because we have some friends from YouTube and Facebook joining us right now. So we're going to jump right into it. Yeah. Keith, Let's go. Keith, can I give you a tough question right off the bat? A tough one? Yes. Can you give, lob me an easy one? No, no, no. no we're okay. going to start go. really hard. Okay. So this, this question comes from us, and it's a great one, especially this time of year. From, this is from Desmond on Facebook. How long do you wait until you ro uh, for rolling out your pie dough after it's coming out of the fridge? Last time, Desmond didn't wait more than five minutes, had a lot of trouble, and the, and the crust ended up coming out too thick. So what's, what's the answer there? Yeah, so five minutes is, is gonna be way too short. So I think at least 15 minutes uh, is, is probably where you're gonna have to wait. Um, you know, if it's too cold, like Desmond found, you're not gonna be able to roll it out thin, the butter's gonna be too hard. Uh, if it's too soft, if you go longer than 15, 20 minutes, uh, the butter's gonna start to melt and you're not gonna have those nice flaky layers. So 15 minutes is probably what you wanna aim for. That's good. And it's probably gonna depend a little bit on like your kitchen, right? If your kitchen's yeah. like, you got your oven on, you're doing yep. a million other things, it could be a little bit faster, Yeah. but five minutes is never enough. I, I don't think yeah. so. Nope. I agree with nope. that. Okay, one for you? Yeah. How about this one? All right. Cindy from Twitter wants to know, she has a beautiful set of stainless cookware. Nice. What is the secret to keeping food from sticking in the fry pans? Okay, that is a good question. Well, Cindy, you're very lucky that you have a beautiful set of new cookware. Um, so stainless steel is great because it is stainless. So for the most part, you're not going to have a lot of problem with you know <clears throat> grease, grease kind of cooking on there and, and tarnishing it. Um, one aspect of it is it's not non-stick. So when you do put food into it, it is going to stick a little bit, and that's kind of okay, right? Because yeah. what you end up getting is is the fond and the nice browning on the bottom of the pan that makes really good pan sauces. Um, what's really interesting is when you add food to the pan, uh, the temperature drops and it yeah. starts to stick. You get that sticking, but if you cook it long enough, it starts to brown, then it's going to release. Yeah, so don't try to, if it's sticking, you're better off to wait for a couple minutes and see yeah. if it will kind of release by itself. Don't try to yank it off and leave food on the, on the skillet. But, yeah. uh, yeah. so, so, if, so if that was the, the question, I, like you really just kind of wait a little bit. If you're talking about after the fact and you've got a lot of stuff just really stuck on there, stainless steel is nice because you can scrub it really hard. Yeah. Um, you can use some Barkeeper's Friend, which is a great product. You can use those sponges that have some of that steel impregnated in them. Yeah. And you can really get rid of any of the kind of oil residue as yeah, well. Yeah, we have that, that chain mail looking thing that we clean oh, yeah, cast yeah, iron. Yeah. I mean, I think that's mostly for cast iron, yep. but that should do a, a pretty good job yep. with stainless steel as well. Cool, all right, good one. All right, so let's see, we've got, answer that one. Oh, we've got some good questions coming here. Oh. All right, so I've got a question here from Joanne, and she wants to know, I'm trying to find out if I can freeze leftover heavy cream. So we, we've actually done a lot of testing with this, and, and you can, um, but I think you want to be careful what you use that leftover cream for. Um, you don't want to use it in a custard, uh, you know, flan, creme anglaise, or something like that. Um, you probably want to use it in a baked application. Uh, it, it might not do well in mashed potatoes. I think it, it's going to start to separate yeah. um, a little bit. But actually, we found that you can use frozen heavy cream thawed of course and whip it and it will stay whipped Did for a while that, really? yeah yeah it doesn't wow. it doesn't stay whipped for long it will weep pretty quickly but yeah you you can, you can whip it do i don't think you're going to find the volume of, yep. of like normal non-frozen whipped cream but you can whip it so cool. you can freeze whipped cream yep. but that makes sense. I mean, baking applications seem like they make the most sense because you're emulsifying it back into a batter exactly so you're probably yep. in good shape there yep. so just i think i would freeze it in small batches don't freeze it in you know a half quart container do like half cup or cup containers yep. and uh, you can probably just pull them out thumb and, and use it, no problem. Nice, that's good, all right. What's up next? Which one do you wanna? Ooh. I'm trying to figure out which hard one you're gonna give me. <laughs> How about this one? Can I bake two Bundt cakes at the same time? So that one comes to us from Helen on Twitter. Can yep. I bake two Bundt cakes at the same time? And I'm gonna go ahead and say, no, I don't know that we've tested this actually, but so when you're talking about baking um, and bunt cakes especially, you really need great airflow in your oven. And so unless you have a really large oven, what you're gonna wanna do is just do one at a time so you get that really good airflow. Bunt pans are, are special in that they actually have a hollow on the inside and that's actually to allow heat to get inside so you can bake through the batter a little bit more quickly and have it, um, have it rise up and really stick nice um, on the sides of the pan there. And so if you had two in there, I worry that you wouldn't have great airflow on the inside and you had some pretty uneven baking. So if you can, avoid doing 
two at once. You agree would, with that? I, yeah, I, I do agree. I would imagine mixing that it would be pretty difficult too. Why you I mean, mixing a double batch? You, yeah, bunt, bunt pans yep. are usually hold quite a bit. You know, 10, 12 cups of batter. So I, I don't know even how you would be able to mix that. And, and make sure that you're incorporating enough air into yep. it. So yeah, let, let's not do that. Let's, yeah. let's, not, let's do not do that. that. It's a nice idea. I mean, two bun cakes is definitely better than one, but I think just stagger them. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, Ooh, our, can I ask you that one? We, okay. I, I yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Kate from Facebook wants to know, what is the best thing that you've eaten at work this year? Oh my God, that's really tough. Hopefully it was one of our recipes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a sandwich I got down the street. No, um, it's really hard because uh, as you all know, we eat a lot of really good food here. Um, I'm actually gonna say, and for me, this was actually relatively recent, and that's why it's really popping in my mind, is our um, four layer gingerbread layer cake. Oh, that's right. Which that's is a, um, a recipe by Andrea Geary, who's a senior editor on Cooks Illustrated, and it's just phenomenal. She bakes the cake in four separate layers, very thin layers, they bake really fast, and then stacks them up with this really cool frosting, um, that's an old school frosting made with a starch gel, and then it's got some, um, the, the flavor is so intense, because yeah. it's got dried ginger in there, it's also got some pepper, so it's like a little bit of spice to it. Coffee. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah there's there's, there's coffee, coffee and a little bit of cocoa powder. It's yeah. it's really incredible. So I would say um, that is maybe the best thing I've eaten this year. How about you? That, that's a that's a really hard question. And Pete I think eats the most food I would say of anyone on Cooks <laughs> Illustrated because he has to go to every single tasting. I mean, I, I try to get to them, but I, oh, I, I thought miss you were them. saying that I just eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's just uh, he just eats too much. No, he's but he's at every single one of them. So. Um, he, that's, you have a lot to choose from. Yeah, that, that's a hard question. And I, and I think that I have to choose something most recent because I can't remember what I ate uh, <laughs> even a couple of weeks ago. But uh, Annie Petito, who is uh, uh, a cook on uh, Cooks Illustrated, made these great uh, ground beef tacos. And, and oh, yeah. having a couple of kids at home, we make a lot those of ground good. beef tacos. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to ruin the surprise because it's going to be in an upcoming issue. But um, we found a way to kind of fry the shells at this, you know, without having to do them separately from the ground beef. Yep. We put the ground beef in the shells and fried them. Uh, so and it just, good. they're, they're so, so good. good. It's uh, one of my, uh, one of my favorite recipes recently. So that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. If you like taco Tuesday at home, this is like taken yeah. to the extreme. It's yeah. so, it's so good. Um, that's so. a great one. Those, maybe that'd be a good combo. The tacos and the, you could do <laughs> and, tacos and the for dinner cake. and then gingerbread. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. That's a great one. Uh, okay. All right, so this is a good one. This comes to us from um, Facebook. Natasha, uh, Natisha on Facebook asked, what is the difference between stock and broth? That's a good one. That is a good one. You want to you take that one? <laughs> it's okay. You don't want <laughs> it's to answer. It's so good. It. I want to answer it. So I can give the, um, the kind of culinary school yes, definition of it. Yes, I think that's probably. Is, so the way I was taught mm. is that stock is generally made from just bones. So um, you have you know, raw beef bones or um, raw chicken bones. And, and you're making it from that. So it doesn't have a ton of flavor necessarily. It has a lot of body, a lot of the gelatin that you get out of the bones. Um, and it's you know super useful for a, a, a huge range of dishes. Yeah. Yep. Whereas broth usually is meat and um, meat and bones combined. Combined, okay. Cooked together. Right. Um, but you actually see them, I think, in terms of when you're going out to purchase it, you see the terms bandied around quite a bit. So they're so probably pretty much the same? Pretty much the yeah. same. Yeah. I would say it's not that it's not that accurate. Um, but you know, for both of them, you wanna keep them pretty much unseasoned when you make them so yeah. that you can reduce them down, concentrate them, use them in anything that you want. That's, cool. That's a good question. Um, oh, here we go. So this one comes uh, perfect time of year. Carlos uh, G from Facebook says, Beef is really expensive and turkey is boring. Sure. What's a great meat alternative for Christmas dinner? Oh, I, I would have to say lamb. lamb. I mean, mm -hmm. w w without a question. Yep. Um, in fact, I think you developed a leg of lamb recipe oh, yeah. three or four years ago yep. that was fantastic. Um, you you don't roll it up, you actually cook it when it's, yeah, it's uh, bone, lying flat. Boneless butterfly, boneless, yep. Yeah, so it, it cooks really quickly, uh, but you also have a lot of flavorful spices underneath it, aromatics. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I mean, bang for your buck, I, I, lamb is the way to go for me. Lamb what about great. you? I'm gonna go with um, our slow roasted pork shoulder. Oh, that's you know nice. what I'm Yeah, of? that's great. So yeah. it's, it's awesome. It's a uh, pork butt, which you traditionally use for barbecue and you cross hatch the fat cap on top. Uh, you rub it with salt and brown sugar and you let it sit in the fridge overnight. Um, and then uh, and then it roasts, it's really easy. It's like 325, I think, in a roasting pan for yep. about five hours. And it's incredible. It gets like crispy on the outside. Um, you know, it's it's sliceable, but just barely holds together. Yeah, super juicy on the inside. Oh my God, yeah, it's, really, it's really impressive. And I think we did like a sour cherry sauce or something with that. So. Yep. Yeah. That would be that would definitely be one of my recommendations. Okay, so we're gonna pause for just a second, and we want to 
thank everybody from Facebook Live and YouTube for joining us today. We're going to stay here and uh, go until 3 o'clock and ask all your holiday questions. So if you want to follow along, uh, go to americastestkitchen.com slash live. And so when you hop over there, if you subscribe, um, you're going to obviously get access to this live Q&A, all future, past, present, future Q&As, um, as well as our entire archive. So we have thousands of recipes, equipment reviews, how-tos, you name it. You get the whole thing. So come on over. We're going to take about a 60-second break here, and then we'll be back and answer a lot more questions.